Hey guys, Omega Dan here and welcome back to the channel and a special Merry Christmas to all that have tuned in. Now in my last video I did a review on the Galaxy Z Flip 3 from Samsung but I'm not done with foldables just yet. Now I'm checking out the new Galaxy Fold 3 which I'm really excited about and special thanks to Samsung Caribbean for sending me this review unit for my channel. Now, is something like this really what you should be considering as your next big tech purchase? And I mean really big because this ain't cheap. Well, that's why you're here. Let's find out. While folded, the phone looks like a small book that definitely has some heft to it at 271 grams, so you will definitely feel the weight in your pocket. Even closed, this looks thicker than most other phones. With improved durability in mind, however, the cover screen has a Gorilla Glass Victus display, which is designed to resist scratches and drops, and the phone has a strengthened aluminum body. The Fold 3 has an IPX8 water resistance, and sadly I'm not going to be, you know, testing that out by submerging it in water, but it should be able to survive, you know, a little bit of rainfall and water splashes. There is no dust resistance, so I would be against going to the beach with this, because the sand might mess up the internals. Uh, it's also very slippery in the hands, so I would suggest that you get a case to ensure you protect your investment because, as I said, this ain't cheap and if it falls and breaks, you break with it. The phone has two main displays. The cover screen is a 6.2 inch OLED dynamic AMOLED display with a 25 by 9 aspect ratio. Unfolded though, the main display is a 7.6 inch foldable dynamic AMOLED display. Both are 120Hz and have HDR10+. The cover display has a 1200 nit peak brightness which makes it nicely viewable in direct sunlight. The narrowness of the cover screen makes doing one-handed use easier even though content looks small compared to the normal width size of a smartphone screen. Both screens however do look absolutely gorgeous as expected from Samsung's displays and the 120Hz makes scrolling through web pages and books a breeze. The under display camera on the main display is hardly noticeable and is quite a sight to see other than the usual hole punch front cameras. This 7.6 inch display makes reading ebooks a much more enjoyable experience and a more, you know, recognizable one. And while that crease may be an eyesore for some, you get used to it soon enough. Now the speakers are actually at the top and the bottom and are seen on the left side of the device when it is um, unfolded like this. And they are surprisingly powerful and provide clear audio even when I'm using it for video calls as well as normal phone calls. So there are no issues right there. Play some, you know, lo-fi or some funk music and you'll see what I mean. The area where this excels at the most is probably multitasking. You can run two apps side by side, even three apps if you want to go that far. One of the features I love is App Pair, where you can save a side by side app shortcut for later use. This is handy especially for me when I want to use Zoom and the Bible app at the same time during my online Sunday service. Samsung Labs is located deeper in the settings, but when you find it, you can activate a list of experimental features from customizing app aspect ratios pinning your favorite apps, and my favorite, forcing multi-window functionality for all apps. The Fold 3 also has a flex mode just like the Flip 3, but unfortunately similar problems amount because not all apps are properly optimized for flex mode. I mean with YouTube you can watch a video on the top half and check on the comments in the bottom, but when you use apps like Amazon, while you can see the contents at the top, you only get very basic controls at the bottom such as you know, taking a screenshot, changing the volume and brightness, that's basically it. The Fold 3 has a triple 12 megapixel camera setup with wide, ultra wide, and telephoto lenses. Overall, pictures taken with the phone will satisfy many people. As like with other flagships from Samsung, pictures taken are colorful and sharp, with the usual oversaturation and color vibrancy. The phone has 2x optical and 10x digital zoom, which is somewhat disappointing considering the S21 Ultra has 3x and 10x optical zoom. The 10x digital zoom is somewhat usable in good lighting, but I would only consider social media uploading and even that is a stretch. 
The cover screen has a 10 megapixel front camera that takes a good shot even though my skin tone isn't fully accurate. The under display camera on the main screen is just 4 megapixels and pales in comparison to the cover screen camera due to loss of detail, blurriness abound and my face is more washed out. You can even use the cover screen as a viewfinder to take the best selfie shots you can using the back camera, which is nice but a bit weird to use in public. Night mode surprisingly produced pictures that are pretty usable as long as it isn't near total darkness. As I said before for the Z Flip 3, Samsung has really improved the video quality. You can see just from the footage here I captured at 4K at 30 frames per second. The video is beautiful and this is probably where I appreciate the color vibrancy and sharpness Samsung sensor captures the most. Stabilization is also very good and it actually makes me not consider using a gimbal at all. Fold 3 has a 4400 mAh battery with 25 watt fast wire charging and 11 watt fast wireless charging. Now on an average day, I can get through the day, but there's just like a little bit of juice left. So, you know, if you're using it extensively, be, you'll definitely be expecting to, you know, charge it at least once throughout the day. And the standby time has been kind of disappointing because when I'm at 100%, I go to bed and like eight hours later, I've lost like maybe about five, six percent of battery life. So standby time isn't really that impressive. Powered by the Snapdragon 888 chipset, with 256 gigabytes of storage and 12 gigabytes of RAM, performance has been snappy and more smooth than my time with the Flip. Multitasking with different apps has been no problem, and playing games like drifting on the streets in Asphalt 9 to gunning down my enemies in Call of Duty has been pretty damn nice. I did notice a lag when switching between the main screen and the cover screen, but to me that's a, just a little bit of a nitpick. Now there is S Pen support, but surprisingly there is none provided in the box along with the phone. And I almost find it criminal for Samsung to actually make us buy an S Pen for this device when they include this with their Galaxy Note lineup. I mean the phone is like $1800 already, to now spend extra to buy get an S Pen so that you can use it uh, to, the, to its fullest potential is kind of... It's just wrong to me, you know, it's almost laughable. I have the S Pen Fold Edition where you can slide the pen into this slot on the case. I was really surprised that the S Pen does not work with the cover screen, which is a letdown because I may not always need to fold open the screen just to jot down a quick note or two. With the pen, you can jot notes and press the button on the pen to activate various features such as Smart Select, Screen Write, and even Translate. The main screen is a respectable size to do some drawing as well, which I have to admit, I pretty much suck at. But to be honest, unless you have a whole leap of money to spend and can overlook the average battery life, bulkiness of the device, the lack of an S Pen, then this actually might be the new productivity mobile device you are looking for. I'm giving this an 8.5 out of 10. So thank you for watching my review on the Galaxy Z Fold 3. Been really excited for this, you know, kind of almost wish I can keep it, but you know, I understand. But anyway, if you enjoy watching this video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified of any new future content that's released on the channel. Thanks again for watching. Please remember to live life and stay connected and Merry Christmas. Till next time.